a lot of time in the grand scheme of things, but you made a legendary mark on this organization. Why do you think there's so much love and nostalgia for what you did in the time together? Yeah, I think part of it is the short-lived um, experience we had together. Um, I think the timing, that the, there was a big transition at that point in time. Mitch and Tim came after me. So when I got here in 85, it was, it was a struggling team, struggling organization. Um, made the switch to uh, Don Nelson, came out from Milwaukee and uh, started changing the roster. Drafted Mitch first and then got Tim and then everything changed. It was an incredible energy. And uh, so I think part of it is, you know, the question, what if they stayed together? You know, so it was a... Uh, you know, energetic, uh, passionate two years, and then uh, and then it ended. So everyone kind of was like, "What happened?" So I think that's part of it. The other part was these guys were incredible players, just incredible players. It was a cr uh, great energy in the building. Um, you know, I can go back to when I first started playing in '85, '86, '87. Uh, one year we made the playoffs. It was it was energetic, but leading up to that, it was not a great place to be you know players around the league did not want to come to golden state um and that changed quickly especially when tim and mitch you know I remember several times guys coming up during the game so i want to come here and play this looks like fun you guys got something going uh so it was becoming somewhat of a destination and then he left <laughs> well he got shipped out i shouldn't say that <laughs> and then, then it all that was the beginning of the end uh, you guys have referred to each other as as lifelong friends and and family. What uh, what drew you guys to each other when you first met? I think good looks. I mean, we all look pretty good. Uh, no, I I think I, the chemistry was um, it was evident right away. I mean, time we we got on the court, it was three guys that really loved to play. Uh, you know, it was times that. You know, Nelly would, would come in after practice or even before games and we would be out working out. He's like, hey, we got a game tonight. Y'all got to get off the court. Uh, we would just go full court one on one all the time. We was just so happy to be here. So excited. But we just love to play. Um, and so I think from that carried over from off the court, uh, we started hanging out together. Me and Tim would, would go shopping together and I stopped going shopping with him because he would try to. Anything I pick, he would pick. So I'm like, man, we, we're on the same team. We can't be wearing the same thing. You know what I mean? So I, I start really start going shopping by myself. <laughs> yeah, so, but yeah, it was just, it was, it was just natural. You know, Tim wife is here and, um, you know, we, the family got along. We would go everywhere together, even on, off, off, uh, I mean, off season. We we'll always meet up and, uh, it was, it was great chemistry and great chemistry. <laughs> It's true. I'll start with stars. <laughs> yeah, no question. Hi, guys. Janie from AP. Uh, what are your strengths and weaknesses as broadcasters? And, and are you going to let uh, any any nerves? And is, or are you just counting on adrenaline? Uh, Molly. Great, Molly. <laughs> He should know better. You know, he should know better. Are you, you know. going to find him? Or, or uh, well, you know, he, he never got fined. Okay. Okay. Never got fined. That was, you know, that's Chris Mullen. <laughs> never got fined. But uh, we will see tonight. We will see, you know, what type of skills we got together. You know, uh, I know Chris Mullen. We, I watch him. He does a great job, you know, during the course of the year. And... um but we we gonna bring the flavor. I I know he's going to bring the flavor. I'm gonna have some flavor right behind him. So we we, we gonna see we gonna we gonna see you know how, how how it goes. But I know we gonna have some fun. And then we got a guy in Tom Tober. Oh we we don't know you know he might say anything. He already probably drinking a beer right now. <laughs> any any prep work going into tonight or just it's all it's all winging it. 
Yeah, we had prep work um, last week when we talked to the producer <laughs> for about 45 minutes. He told us what we need to do and how we need to do it. And we wasn't really paying attention. <laughs> you know, we, 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 you know, we come in like, we was like, yeah, right. It was on a Zoom call too. It was like, yeah, right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everybody's looking at their watch like, mm -hmm. yeah, right. I got you. All right, bye. But that's always how those production meetings yeah. go, right? How did this just whole thing come about? And what was your guys' initial reaction when you were asked to come back and, and call this game together? Raymond. Yeah, Raymond Witter. Where you at? He uh, he he, you know what? He always appear and then he disappear. <laughs> but you know what? He al always reaches out to us. And, um, he, you know, he always stays in touch with us. And he always wants us to come back here and do stuff. If it's not, you know, with the team, it's in the community, um, um, at basketball camps, community activists, um, whatever it is, um, he thinks that we'll be helpful for. He calls us and um, want us to be a part of and and, and I, you know that's great for him to do that that's great for the team to do that um the organization to do that because we all all three of us are willing to do it you call me up I'm yes of course i'm coming back because my wife loved to come to the san francisco the big area so of course i'm coming back and, and and with these two guys love being with them hanging out with them and and enjoying you know um everything every time we get together just enjoying it so yeah um, that's how it came about. And um, it's um, throwback jersey night tonight. So, yeah, they win our jerseys. So when y'all met with that producer, did, was it made clear what you can't say? Uh. Yeah. <laughs> yes. What did you guys think of the Run TMC branding, making, making it a cultural phenomenon, too? I think, Carol, I think that's the other reason this thing has stood the test of time because of that nickname. For some reason, it caught on. It was really kind of a joke, really, when we first did it. We did it with a uh, good friend, Steve Albert. We just did it after practice one day and kind of did a little skit, picked some names out of, uh, you know, like a, picked some names out of a hat, threw a few around, and, you know, we kind of picked that randomly. I actually think we're going to meet the, the, the person who uh, recommended that name. He's going to be here tonight. Um, but that name stuck. Obviously, it was a popular rap group from Queens, New York. Uh, little known fact. Actually, was in class with one of those members from Run DMC. He was a classmate of mine at St. John. So I had a little more connection than these guys did to it. <laughs> but... Yeah, I think that name had a little, it was, it was a catchy name. And, you know, the other things I say, the fact that it was such a short-lived and, you know, kind of a, you know, storm. And then it kind of just went away. Wait, I got to follow up. So there were some other potential names for this trio. Do you happen to remember what any of those were? Some brutal ones. <laughs> Three Musketeers, <laughs> Three Stooges, which probably should have been it. Right, Scott? <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, uh, first of all, it's good to see all you three back together again. This takes me back to my childhood when I was watching you guys. So is this something to start to where you guys maybe want to come back to this organization and do some more with the Warriors here? Has that been brought up to you guys? And again, would you guys like to be more part of it in the future here? Yeah, I mean, we, we've been back. You know, sometimes we've been real silent, uh, but we, we definitely come back. It's, it's one of the organizations that really do reach back. Uh, and, and just like Tim said, we're always coming back to really kind of help the community, whatever Raymond want us to do, you know, we are, we're always willing, um, you know, it's all three of us got drafted here. So it's a, it's a love we have here. Uh, it's something that you, you really can't explain. Um, you know, I went to different places, all of us went to different places, but it's just something about where you got drafted. Um, and, and I think Golden State does a really good job of reaching back to some of the players. So, yeah, we we'll, we love to come back. Um, how often do you guys uh, get to catch up with each other? I know you guys maybe have busy schedules, but do you guys see each other a lot? We, we talk a lot. I mean, we, we talk a lot. We're on Zooms every other time. We're trying to do some business together. Uh, and so we talk a lot. Um, anytime something comes up, we're always on a thread. Uh, you know, any, any holidays, birthdays, 
Uh, we're on a thread with uh, not just us, but Tom Tobert, uh, Rod Higgins, uh, a lot of guys that played that that year. Tom Abdenar, yeah, Tom Abdenar. So we we're on a, a thread of guys that we uh, we actually have a connection with here. Is that a group text? Or anything? That's that's a group text. Yeah. <laughs> Not he doesn't know about technology. He's getting there. You know what I mean? So just what are your guys' thoughts on this current Golden State Warriors team and how they've been navigating the early season? No, you go ahead. Uh -huh. uh, well. No, we it's it's fun to watch. You know, I'm, we always talk about um, watching the NBA. It's one team that we're always watching. Uh, it's fun to watch. It's, it's exciting how they play. It's exciting how they move the ball. Uh, it kind of reminds us of when we play. You know, what I mean, we're, we we move the ball, we cut, we passed, um, and so it's always good to 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 see, especially the fans. You know, what I mean, like. We weren't winning championships, but this was one place that they were standing up and, and, and really cheering for. It's one place that when your team is not playing so well, uh, they're still cheering and trying to get you out of that that little rut. Most places will boo your team. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a real different feeling when you run on the court here at Golden State uh, because the fan gives you that energy. Even when you're sore, you know, you got a bad knee. Uh, you you want to play for them because it's it's the excitement that happens. Uh, I, I don't know if it's the colors. I don't know what it is, but it's something about the 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 atmosphere here that you you really want to play. So, so. All right, uh, Warriors are zero and seven on the road so far. And, and Raymond Ritter's uh, stats tonight points <laughs> out the last team, last Warriors team to start zero and seven on the road in in a season is. It was you guys the first year? Wow, team. really? So did it take you a while to get going? That's, what you're going to do? that's great, Scott. That was awesome. That's that's the way to bring us in. Really, it's just encouraging how you pulled out of that. That's what you want to take that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't. I didn't know that stat. I didn't know that stat either. Yeah. Um, what you did? Oh, well, well, you work here, so yeah. It's I mean, you know, but I we learn. Yeah, each other. That's when. That's when we first started. Oh. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, of course. Okay. Well, we we were still trying to learn, you know, stuff. <laughs> Each other, and you know, you know, I was still my rookie. I was still trying to learn stuff, you know, <laughs> trying to keep Nelly happy and you know stuff like that. So yeah, I mean, I don't know what to say about that, Scott. <laughs> I don't have a comeback for that. Oh, there you go. No, I think I think what Tim says is is uh, appropriate to this team. Very young, yeah. trying to figure things out. You know, this is a unique situation uh, with this group because you're talking about, you know, a dynasty and trying to extend way beyond any dynasty we've seen in the past. You know, the Celtics, the Lakers, the Bulls, they all broke up before this point in time. So they're trying to extend this this run into, uh, you know, with Steph, Clay, and Draymond and Andre into their mid-30s. That's, that's, that's a tough thing to do. Um, it's very early in the season, you know, so trying to bridge that gap and, and find that connection with the first unit to the second unit. Um, I actually think last year's journey was as tough as I've seen. You know, they got off to a great start, 18-2, and two, and then you've had injuries, Clay coming back, Steph going out, Draymond, and, and they got it together at the right time. And I thought actually even in the finals, I thought that was a somewhat bad matchup for them athletically, and they, they got their defense together, figured it out. So... It's a different journey, and I think the fact that it's happening in the beginning of the season is getting somewhat maybe overanalyzed. Um, but that's, you know, so we've played together two years. So it was Tim's second year in the league. And although he played like an all-star, that was not – we didn't feel like that was a finished product at that point in time. So, you know, between Kaminga, Moses Moody, and James Wiseman, I think uh, – you know, they'll figure it out. And I think it's, you know, just trying to connect those. The starters have it figured out, right? They read and react on offense and defense perfectly. They've been together for a decade. You know, that's that's a long time to to expect them just to figure that out and play the same way. That's why we went 0-7. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, oh, oh thanks. Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Right in the call. <laughs> 
Chris and Mitch, you guys have played together for a year and, you know, all of you kind of walked in starting. What did you think when Tim comes and he's already got a little flair about him? Like, he's got a nickname. He's got a move. What are you guys thinking when he comes to town and joins the fold? It's what we needed. Uh, to tell you the truth, we needed someone with an edge. And Tim brought that edge, that that fire, uh, no fear. Um, you know, Mully is quiet. I'm kind of like in between. And Tim is loud. <laughs> and so we we really needed that as a team because, he, you know, he, he really was our, our quarterback. You know, so when we got him and, and when Mully, I mean, when Nelly, you know, uh, gave him captain and said, hey, we need to get him the ball. You guys just run the lane. Uh, we understood that what we needed to do. And if we needed to get down the court, we wanted to shoot, shoot the ball because he was going to shoot them all. Because we was playing a motion game and, you know, Tim was talking smack to everybody. So, but no, it, it's what we needed for the team at that time. I think it was. It's kind of like the situation where we're here with the We Believe team, uh, where we had something and we got Steven Jackson at that time, and we needed that fire uh, that we had Baron Davis and Jason Richardson and all of those guys, uh, but you needed someone to bring a little fire, and Steven Jackson brought that, and, and Tim was that for us. All right. Thank you, guys. We'll get Stern here momentarily. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you.